What's going on with these top prospects? We'll discuss next on Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. Welcome into FBT in 5. As always, make sure to follow and stream us on Spotify. Today is Saturday, May 28th. I am Frank Stanfield, joined by Scott White. Let's take a look at the five prospects on the verge. Royce Lewis with the Twins. Grayson Rodriguez with the Orioles. Joe Adele with the Angels. Vinny Pasquantino with the Royals. Miguel Vargas with the Dodgers. Scott, talk to me about Vinny P, the new addition to the list. Yeah, Vinny Pasquantino, I think, is maybe the most on the verge of all of them. Like, I, I feel like that promotion could happen any day now. They are overdue to upgrade from Carlos Santana. They tried it briefly with Ryan O'Hearn again, tapped that well, went back to that well again, and, and it delivered the same results. They're, they're just getting no production from that position. And Pasquantino, uh, he's been... Red hot. He just had a two homer game that included. It was a five hit game, two homers, two doubles. There was a grand slam. He's among the the minor league leaders in home runs now. He has a near one to one strikeout to walk ratio for the second straight year. Just uncommon plate discipline, uncommon back control for a guy with his kind of power. And you know, as a slow footed first baseman who can't really play anywhere else, he, he hasn't gotten a lot of price prospect hype. That's a phenotype that doesn't tend to get much hype because it has a narrow path, but he, he's showing the kind of hitting potential that I think uh, could make him a steal in fantasy. Widely, widely available still. Uh, I also want to highlight here uh, the fact that O'Neill Cruz is not among my five on the verge. He has, there, there are still a lot of, baseball writer types clamoring for him to get the promotion you know felt like he was unjustly sent down at the end of spring training he has been hitting better in may he's been producing lately about like we thought he should from the get-go but he hasn't been hot you know he, he's just kind of gotten back to doing what he should have been doing all along and, and it, it hasn't been good enough for him to, to, to raise his batting average over 200. I don't know. Maybe by the time you're listening to this, it's over 200, but he he's, he's, he's only gotten to where he's flirting with that batting average. So I, I don't think a team in the pirates position, not competing for anything, obviously have financial incentives to keep him down. Like he's going to have to force them to call him up. And I don't think what he's doing now is, is that. So, eh, you know, I think he'll be up at some point this year, but I don't think O'Neill O'Neill Cruz's time is is now. Five prospects on the periphery. These are prospects that are doing something of note recently. Brian Bello, starting pitcher with the Red Sox. Kyle Stowers, an outfielder with the Orioles. Alec Burleson, an outfielder with the Cardinals. Logan Ohapi, A plus name, catcher with the Phillies. And Brandon Walter, a starting pitcher with the Red Sox. All right, Scott, we've got two starting pitchers within the Red Sox organization on this list. Yeah, and Brian Bell is the one who I think the average fantasy owner needs to be most aware of because he ha there may not be another pitching prospect who's improved his stock more this year than Bello. He just made the jump to AAA, his first two starts there, double-digit strikeouts in each. And he was a big strikeout guy in the minors last year too, but this year he's... He went from having a very straight fastball to a lot more sink on that fastball, so he's getting ground balls in addition to the strikeouts, and it's just it's kind of made him close to unhittable. Uh, sub two ERA between Double A AA and Triple A. He's on the sort of trajectory that I think could land him in the Red Sox rotation before seasons in. That's Brian Bello. The other two on this list, who I, I think could be up. Sooner than later, Kyle Stowers of the Orioles, who you mentioned, he's always had big power. He's cut down on his strikeouts this year. He just recently had a three-homer game, so he's been heating up at AAA. Orioles, of course, could always use extra offense. Alec Burl Burleson of the Cardinals, Alec Burleson, uh, he is kind of the opposite of Stowers, where he's always made good contact, but the power 
has been lacking. He's had to make some adjustments to his swing and is starting to tap into a more big guy. So, you know, you could see him developing into a power hitter and it may be happening for Alec Burleson. They've, they've already burned through so many minor leaguers, the Cardinals that he might be next. He might be next. And I'll just mention real quick, Logan O'Hoppy, since you like the name so much. He's emerging as one of the top catcher prospects. I think OBP over 400 this year. He really, uh, became a much more patient hitter broke broke through in the Arizona fall league, basically with all those walks and pretty good power source as well. So, you know, JT real Muto looks like he may be slowing down. He's under control for a long time for the Phillies, but Logan O'Hoppy may start to uh, enter the picture there next year. I knew I heard his name somewhere before and uh, shout out to our buddy, the Welsh. He was all over Logan O'Hoppy at the Arizona fall league. And it was there where Ohapi hit 299, a 959 OPS, three homers, three steals, more walks than strikeouts. And so far, he's carried that over into the minor league season. So he's got an awesome name, and he is somebody to watch. For more extensive fantasy baseball coverage, listen to the Fantasy Baseball Today podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, your smart speakers, or anywhere else podcasts are found. And thanks for listening to Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. We'll be back again on Monday morning. Bye-bye.